This is a production of Cornell University. Thank you, Magdalene. Uh, as she said, my name is Daniel Sweeney. I'm a fourth year PhD candidate in Mark Sorrell's lab in the section of plant breeding and genetics. And I'll be talking a little bit today about accelerating malting barley breeding for making beer in New York. So there are over 400 craft breweries in New York, and many of these can be directly attributed to the passage of the New York State Farm Brewery Bill in 2012. This provided economic incentives for local breweries to use locally produced hops and malt. This law mandates that malting barley be produced in New York to go into the New York beer. This is all well and good, but producing high quality malting barley in New York is difficult due to the wet and humid summers that we tend to have, which can have detrimental effects on quality and yield. So our goal is to quickly breed a superior malting barley variety for New York that makes great beer and can stand up to our crazy summer weather. So our strategy is to use genomic prediction. And many of you are likely familiar with this, but for those that aren't, genomic prediction enables unphenotyped lines to uh, have their genetic value predicted solely based on genome-wide molecular markers. And this is useful because it potentially reduces or even eliminates the need for time-intensive field phenotyping. Our strategy to increase and maximize our prediction accuracy of uh, superior progeny was to use a highly structured population composed of seven families crossed to a single common parent. This enabled us to have high prediction accuracy for agronomic traits, disease traits, and quality traits. This population structure also enabled us to have high power for genome-wide association studies on the top right. Um, and we're not interested in the genetic architecture per se of these traits, but in using these market trait associations to plug back into our genomic prediction models. And the, the chart on the bottom right shows that when we add some of these marker trait associations back into the genomic prediction model, uh, we can have increased prediction accuracy at small training population sizes and for high heritability traits, which is potentially useful for us. Now, on the applied side of things, uh, we've taken the better lines from this genomic prediction training population, use them to initiate a recurrent genomic selection project that's ongoing, but also enter them into regional yield trials last year and this year. We don't have a good understanding of the genotype by environment interaction for malting quality in New York, which is important because to make consistently good craft beer, you have to have consistently good grain. And uh, craft beer needs to be good. Um, so that's, it's all about the flavor and the taste. So um, we're hoping that this uh, data set of two years and five locations each will enable us to pick apart the G by E interactions a little bit. We're also hopeful that we'll be able to select a variety out of these trials after the growing season this summer with foundation seed in 2020 and potential release to farmers in 2021. Lastly, we're also looking a lot into genotyping and phenotyping methods to improve our understanding of pre-harvest sprouting in barley. This is a phenomenon that occurs when grain prematurely loses dormancy in the fields before harvest, and when it's exposed to excessive humidity or rain, it will begin to germinate in the field. This obviously has detrimental effects to quality. So we're looking at two phenotyping methods, greenhouse-based mist assays, as well as a piece of equipment called a rapid visco analyzer to better understand what's going on with this phenotype, and also using two recently developed markers, uh, tagging two cloned uh, pre-harvest sprouting related genes in barley. Um, with that, I'd like to thank uh, the various members of the Sorrels Lab, as well as some other SIPS labs, some of our funding sources, and I'd be happy to take any questions. So the question was, what do we do if we do have large GYE effects over years and locations for the malting traits? Ideally, we're gonna be selecting something that's stable. We wanna lower the risk for farmers as much as possible because the difference between uh, animal feed grade barley and malting quality barley, barley can be eight to $10 a bushel. Um, so ideally, we, we want stability, but potentially um, we, can, uh, we might be able to identify two or three lines that are better adapted to maybe one to Western New York, one to the Finger Lakes, one to the Hudson Valley. 
hopefully we can find stability though. This has been a production of Cornell University on the web at cornell.edu.